Hello, it is raining hard and storming and even thunder and it is pouring and the western grey came back and we are very grateful. He is downstairs on the balcony eating sunflower seeds and it is very nice. And yesterday, after I made the video yesterday, I was already not in a very good mood <laughs> um, because of the people on Facebook. And, um, you know, the religious, very, very, very s severely religious people, Christians and Muslims equally much are going on my nerves a whole lot and they lie and I think what bothers me the most is the, uh, are the lies lies and double standard and male domination type of mindsets both of them have it the Muslims of course obviously have it right in your face and the Christians have it too, it's a little bit more covertly, which makes it, which makes it a heck of a lot more irritating for me actually. I don't know, it just irritates me so badly when people lie. And when I'm angry, <coughs> I'm obviously not above the situation. When I'm angry, it triggers my ego which I'm working on, but it does trigger my ego badly. I think no, no other group on earth triggers my ego as, as seriously as the fundamentalist Christians, much more than the Catholics, much more than anyone else. I don't, I don't know, that's a personal thing. I think I carried that from my pa two past lifetimes, maybe not just the two past lifetimes, but dating back, I mean, my entire lineage back, you know, and then particularly when these things started to unfold you know, within the last 2,000 years. So anyway, it is, you know, I can always talk myself blue in the sweater but people don't listen but what's really bad is lies blatant lies and double standard hypocrisy you know male domination you know it's always this they never think about it they never they never look at it from above they look at it from their perspective. Of course, the, the males like to oppress the women. That that's goes hand in hand with the ego. And so, therefore, that part in Christianity or in religion in general is never questioned because it works. It plays into their cards. Same with the Muslims. They like to oppress right in your face and <laughs> and they have no problems with that they don't see any problem with that as, as at all yeah. they will write to me are you married I say yes I'm married and then they go doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't matter I'm married too it doesn't matter we can we can send each other some nudes I said no I don't want to do this I'm married Oh, it doesn't matter. But it's very interesting for me to, it's very interesting for me to observe all of this. And um, the problem with this is, with in myself, is that there, that it's like a tug of war going on, you know. And that's why I'm even looking up some people, you know. When someone looks really good, you know, at least I admit it. So come on, uh, you're all a little bit afflicted with these things. Don't tell me that you are completely free of that. I bet you are not. We all, particularly we women, want 
we want to be adored, we want to be liked, we want to be loved and wanted. We want to be physically wanted. It is an old pain, it is, comes from childhood. We are eating that up like a drug. And most of us are, you know. And um, there are very few exceptions. There are, you know, some women are gay and some women are, might be trans. You know, they are not into that because their, their brains are male. And sometimes their brains are completely male and the body is female with reproductive organs, everything. They even have kids. But the brain is completely male. So that's all very interesting. And they don't have this. So it is <coughs> it is the she women. It is the the total women, the total woman, the the Elizabeth Taylor as I call it. You know, for me Elizabeth Taylor is that embodiment of the ultimate female brain with the ultimate female body. And so yeah, most of us are that, and we are lucky with this, you know. Don't, don't think for a second that you're disadvantaged with this. You know, as they always say in the James Bond films, <laughs> the women have their, their women weapons. Yeah. The weapon of the woman is her, is her appeal, is her libido. And it, you don't have to be looking like Elizabeth Taylor to have that libido, and to have that, to have that feeling of self-worth and and self-love. You know, like kissing. I used to hate that my my wrists were bony, like a st strong protruding bone in there. I was ashamed of that as a child. So. Um, it is what it is. I'm not ashamed about it anymore. I um, prefer a shape where there is no bone sticking out at all. Like look, looks like a like a dull man. Like you know that that dull commercial. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So that's what I like, but that's because that's the artist in me, the artist that likes rounded, padded shapes. So that's also why I'm chubby, because I'm trying to cover up the bony structure underneath. Kind of pointy knees and pointy elbows and all of this, you know, see? It's bony. So I'm trying to cover that up has to do with my childhood, has to do also with my childhood pain. It is definitely, certainly coming from something that ha has to do with some pain. And yeah, it has to do with my chubby brother, baby, who was, um, who had all the attention and, and I was standing on the side watching and I felt like no one loved me anymore. And um, this is all very sad and it's very, 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 very painful. I watched uh, a documentary film about John Binney Ramsey and that happened in 2006 when I was back in Germany and was studying psychology at that time. I came back to LA in 1997 so that's also when I met Paul in LA because he had two great dance. But anyway, I w when I came back to LA, I don't know if we heard about this already in Germany. Um, I know what th the only story that came through to uh, to us worldwide was the story about Heaven's Gate and the ten people who committed suicide because they thought a meteor sh spaceship was coming by and picking up their souls. So that's why they all committed suicide and it does sound a little bit it does sound a little bit out there but I 
my first I was not I'm not and I'm not laughing about it you know it just sounds like very very out there I'm not laughing about it but I know this is all just based on an idea and nothing else they committed suicide for an idea just like so many people do yeah. just an idea just a phantasmagorical mind spinning and uh, following also following again a followership and all of this but uh, that was the only story that came through but when I came back to LA there was the story on the news all over the place that has been going on already for a long time about John Binney Ramsey then when I saw the photo I I was struck by the way she looked because believe it or not you you might think I'm the ugliest woman in the world but believe it or not this is exactly how I looked like at her age that's exactly almost identical almost identical Aww. so strikingly similar that it I, I thought it was eerie it gave me goosebumps when I saw that and of course as you can imagine that hits right into home that hits right into the home pain that hits right into the core of my existence. I see this little girl. If you, if my mother had bleached my hair blonde, my hair was also about the same length, or maybe a little shorter, but same length. I, and, and I'm sure she had brown hair underneath. I have dark brown hair, and as a, ch as a child, always had dark brown hair. And wavy and if, I, if my mother had bleached my hair blonde and dressed me up like her you would probably not be able to discern between the two girls and um, I had that same that same look on my face also the same teeth the same mouth nose and these the same vulnerable eyes and whew, it's really 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 terrible my goodness terrible so many thoughts coming up now and um boy, if you could see into my brain what's going on in there it's like there are like 10,000 things going on simultaneously and feelings and emotions and confusion and association constantly associate my brain is constantly associating all over the place and it's like it shoots off in every direction uh, it shoots off in, in thousands of split split up directions but all of these things are interconnected all of this is completely interlinked so anyway when I look at that photo, and I, I watched another documentary, several, and I browsed through, I didn't watch all the way through because I can't stand seeing these basement photos. But, um, but I see, I feel so much, you know, when I see it, I feel so much of this total helplessness, this total, you know, with the, with the dark shades under my eyes that I had from childhood on already. So when I, I, it was so bad, you know, and then my brother came into, into existence and I was looking forward to my brother. It was kind of like, oh, like I'm getting a toy, you know, my mommy is giving me a, a baby boy. And um, it's like my baby boy brother, like a toy, like a doll. Yeah. And so then when he was there, I wanted to play with him, but he doesn't, didn't want to play with me. He was just a newborn. And I wanted to, to show him my artwork. And he, of course, a newborn cannot be admiring artwork or it doesn't know very much, you know. It's in total awe about all of these impressions from the world. To in total amazement and all of this and my bro my mother didn't give him breast milk so he got really sick because if you don't give breast milk the baby will get very very sick 
because the baby doesn't have all the, the antibodies that we need for all these lingering viruses and bacteria that are constantly surrounding us. You know, when you're an adult, you have um, a portfolio in your body of all kinds of immunities, all kinds of fighter cells and and antibodies that that disable the the viruses and bacteria and the fungus and all of this and the newborn doesn't have that that's why they are so vulnerable and that's why I say you have to breastfeed if you are giving birth yeah. so you have to breastfeed this is very very important you don't want to create another very sick and sickly human being yeah. Um, and it, c it can also affect the brain, it can, can affect how they feel. And the kitty is there. Kitty, hi. <laughs> kitty came in. So, Papa Dog wants to play with the kitty. Kitty does not want. So, anyway, yeah. And so then extreme jealousy happened. And in the case of Jean Benet Ramsey, it was her older brother. She had. I, I don't know how many older brothers she ha has. I People were talking about an, another brother, I don't know. So anyway, she they're only talking, mainly talking about this brother who was nine years old at that time, and she was six, and he was very, very badly jealous. All of this is very fascinating for me. Absolutely, absolutely fascinating. I, n I didn't hear about the brother until just yesterday when I watched these newer documentary films. And this investigation is ongoing. It, it won't stop, I think. It won't stop even after they're all, of, all of them are dead. And um, I know the mother. The mother's innocent. I know that for sure. So, but... It is pretty obvious that she wrote that ransom letter because experts have determined that is her handwriting. And why would she do this? Why would she participate in this thing? And my only explanation is that she was covering up for her son because her son was nine years old and she did not want the the legislators taking him away from them and and also then uh, not she didn't know what was going to happen to him you know if she if he goes into some kind of juvenile prison or something or some kind of mental institution for criminally insane and i understand her i understand this reaction and so apparently what happened is they found her in the basement where her head had been clubbed in and she was clubbed in and I hope they didn't I you know more thoughts coming up now but anyway it is probably that they found her they found her dead with the head clubbed in and then and she was probably dead unless they're total psychopaths and they um, they have so much to hide in their lives that if the girl had gone to the hospital and woken up and told the, the entire story then they would have they all would have probably been convicted of pedophile participation and stuff like this and the mother probably convicted of participating in this pedophile cult someone was mentioning this and it makes a lot of sense because they always had these elaborate Christmases with thousands of people coming the mayor also and people that were in, in law enforcement a lot of people involved in this and the girl said that Santa um, 
came to give her present and then he said I will also visit you later tonight um, a special visit and so she was half asleep and it was very late and it is it all sounds extremely creepy but I believe that the mother was genuinely crying over her child. The mother was just deeply involved in all of this. They also, you know, this pedof pedophile type of group, almost like a satanic cult or something. There was probably a lot of money involved with this, you know. Um, probably renting out their children. Who knows? You know, it is this there's so much that they were trying to cover up. They may have even the the girl may have been unconscious because the brother clubbed her. He's clubbed apparently clubbed her before. I don't know if any of this is true, but the, these are it's very confusing because there's so much cover up going on. And when there's so much cover up going on, then you could tell that there's probably some much deeper problem. And the deepest problem is, in my opinion, is this Christianity and and all of this sexual repression, this incredible sickness yeah. and this covering and this this pretending. And this, that's why that's why they go on my nerves so much when I talk to them, because the way they talk, it makes me want to vomit. It really does. And and then when I stop step farther away from the big picture, then I see. I see that they're all victims, you know. Then then. Then my bear mother comes out, then I have compassion for them. But I'm not free from ego. I'm not a god. I have my emotions too. You know. And not only that, I grew up in a family background, first of all in Germany, where religion is not, is not, doesn't escalate to those proportions or cults or something, doesn't escalate to that proportion because they make sure that kids are educated. They make sure that they're educated about their biology, about evolution, uh, about science and, and reality, what's going on here on Earth. They're not being told some creepy pathological lie you know, about their their origins. You know. So. Um, People are more down to earth because of that, and <coughs> and on top of that, I I'm coming from a very highly aristocratic family, where classical music was playing every day, and I learned to play the violin and and those uh, the wooden flutes and and we were constantly listening to Johann Sebastian Bach my favorite favorite composer and my favorite music so it always tops all the popular type of music so all the other music genres although I got deep into heavy metal later on but that was an emotional response also and, and punk and Henry and, and all of those Lemmy and um, but classical music has always been the the dominating force, always throughout my entire life. And culture and and books and and poetic novel writing and always been exposed to the greatest of the greatest artists always been exposed to to deep minds yeah? and that has a tremendous influence on us you know when we when we grow up I have to open this a little wider this is getting 
pretty grey outside, so, and it gets very dim inside here. So, but I see that the people who didn't have that opportunity, it's not their fault. It's not their choice. When we talk about soul choices, that, that runs on a completely different plane. That's not running on the on the earthly 3D plane. That so we cannot put bring this into the conversation in terms of oh that was her choice, her, she made that soul choice. Her, it's her fault. No, it's not. So. No, that's a, that runs on a completely different dimension. So when we're talking here 3D. It is not the child's choice to be growing up in a in a, a very adverse environment, in a mentally depleting and anti-informational environment. And so when I see it from this higher perspective, this wider perspective, then I feel for them, I feel sorry for them and all of this. But I, but when I talk to them, the conversations trigger me beyond imagination. It triggers such anger and rage in me. And I'm still trying to grow and learn and find out and introspect. Find, I'm, I'm trying to find out why. Why does it trigger me so much? You know, the same as why did Christianity trigger Friedrich Nietzsche so much? You know? It's the same thing. Why did it bother him so much? Um, he explained it um, as good as he could. He said it goes against his taste. And I, I can so strongly relate to this. You know. It's distasteful. It's it's an insult. It's an insult to the truth, to genuinity, to art. It's actually an insult to art. And art is love. It's an insult to love. That's what Christianity is. It's an insult to Jesus Christ. And I wanted to also mention this. I've been, I, talk, I think about this all day long, you know, I have these inner dialogues. And, and I know that Jesus Christ, if Christians really knew who that man is or that soul, they would be shocked because everything about him would be regarded as the Antichrist. The word alone, the Antichrist, I recommend to everyone to read that book by Friedrich Nietzsche, The Antichrist. Because who is that really, the Antichrist? The Antichrist is not a devil. <laughs> um, I want people to research this. Who is depicted as the devil? The god Faunus, from the pagan farmers in Europe, from the Anglo-Germanic pagans, Faunus, also Pan. That's very interesting, the name Pan, Faunus and Pan, that's the same figure, that's the same god. It's the fertility god. It's the god of harvest and growing food and life and love and self-respect and vitality and fertility and libido. Okay. And so what the Christians have done is they have banded into the shame folder everything that had to do with life. And Friedrich Nietzsche also talks about it. And when you read the Zarathustra, you see the, the Zarathustra figure, the 
the the, rec the recluse, the one, the outcast. The in Sanskrit, it's it's the they have a word for that as well. Satya is the truth. Sachi is the outsider. So interesting the comment that the the connection the 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 linguistic relationship the linguistic connection all the way back you know this the meaning of it is it comes from the same meaning satya is the truth sachi is the outsider so with other words the one who speaks the truth is banned away from the community. In Germany we have the, these words gemein and gemeinde. Gemein means mean. Gemeinde means community. You see again the community is mean, is plump, is mentally plump, is mentally regressive, likes to lie, likes to bully. There are two types of minizang. In the Middle Ages, they didn't have entertainment, of course. They didn't have internet, they didn't have record players, they didn't have rock bands, none of this existed. They didn't even have African music. They didn't have native music from around the world. For example, I'm talking now about Middle Age Europe. Before the Romans came in, even before f France started to become a Roman language, they were all kind of speaking the same Anglo, Anglistic, Anglo, Germanic dialects. So, you know, maybe they differed. You know, the farther they got away from each other, the more they they have taken on their own character and shape and all of this. But when you hear Minnesang from France, let's say from 1200. It, it sounded like a Germanic language. It sounded like German. The Roman influence had not come into it yet. So, and at that time, they had the god Faunus, or Pan, and that was the fertility god. And he had a hoof, and he had, or two hoofs, and he had horns on his head, and uh, maybe claws on his hands. So it was an animal-human hybrid figure. And he, I think he was decorated also with, with ivy leaves or something. It was, or with grapes. It was all about harvest, fertility, love, nature and unity with everything. You know, we're all connected with the cells all, all the way around us, all the trees, all the animals. We are animals. We really are. And they instinctively felt it and they lived it. Then the Romans came in with their Christian religion, with the beginnings of the Christian religion. And they forced it on people, and as they as they created their their feudal systems and their their reigning uh, positions, their governing uh, what's the what's the word for it? The governing rangers, you know, like the, they had their radiuses of land ownership that they just took like this. They just took it. They just invaded and took it. And they said, you are no longer your own person wherever you are homesteading. We're owning this land. And you have to pay us 
a tax. You have to pay us. They have a specific name for that. And um, of course, that made some farmers very angry. Some of them stood up. There, there has been unrest and all of this. So, and in order to have more control over the farmers, they used superstition, as they always do, which, which is religion. They, they drilled it into them and into the children and all of this that they, they just invented this. They said, your God found us as the devil. He is Satan. And who is Satan again? Satan means the accuser in Hebrew. The person who accuses is Satan. So that makes everyone who says, wait a minute, the emperor has no clothes on. Wait a minute, uh, what you're doing there is wrong. That person is regarded as an accuser. That person is seen as Satan. Satan means the accuser. So Satan, and then they made it into the devil, into the one who is from evil. De evil. Devil. From. D means from, stemming from. Evil. So I don't know where the word evil comes from linguistically, but something to be afraid of. You know. And um, it doesn't exist. That's a human brain invention. It comes from the ego. You know. And it is really the ego that is the very thing that they're accusing the accuser of. So you see how they're accusing? They don't see the double standard in it. They're the, they're the ones that are really, that, that are doing false accusations. And they don't see it. They don't see how the false accusations is what comes from the ego, what comes from the adversity. And the true accusations, the ones where I stand up for myself and I say, this is wrong, what they're doing. That is being regarded by, naturally regarded by, by the psychopath as, as the bad, as the evil, or as the, as the devil, Satan. So, but people don't see through any of this. They just let someone scare them into it. You know, I see, for example, when I see people's reactions on their videos. There'll be a video of, you know, let's say a child looks at a lamp a lot. And maybe she does see something out of this world. It doesn't have to be something bad. It could be maybe, it could be something beneficial. It could also be an unrestful thing, entity, whatever. You know. She sees something because she is new to the world and she hadn't been brainwashed, she hadn't been shamed yet. So she looks at, at that and acknowledges that as, as something that's there and may even be in awe, not, not, not scared at all. I've seen cats on, um, on Psychotria varietas. It's a, I talked about this before. It's an Amazonian plant, a shrub with big leaves and sometimes wild cats have been observed to eat those and go into a psychedelic sort of trip and um, the cat will large adult cat will suddenly become a baby kitten lie down and look at something in the tree that isn't perceivable for us but she sees something because she's on, on psychotria varietas. And um, so, yeah, there is something going on. But now, the comments under the videos, they go like, oh my gosh, this is scary. This is creepy. This is, so every, th every time, you know, I mean, it is anytime people feel like they're out of control of something. They can't label something. They, they don't know what it is. They get very fearful. 
and people get fearful very fast. Someone says anything, even an invented thing, and people freak out. So you can see how the, the masses, most humans, are very, very easily manipulated. Uh, the corporate agenda takes full advantage of this. Trust me on this. This video is getting long, so you guys take care. Bye-bye.